One of the things that strikes me when I look at many of these works is the consistency of uh, not, not only the, the sort of um, persuasiveness of the, of the point of view you've chosen, and how you do that is a mystery to me, and maybe to you too, <laughs> but uh, you, you have some sort of you know, compass, uh, artistic compass, clearly, that, that really helps out. But the, uh, the sense of, um, of, of a time of day, I mean, these things can't be done in a matter of hours, most of them, no. uh, and, or even a matter of days, perhaps, mm -hmm. and yet the feeling that the sun has been in place, <laughs> that you've, you've stopped the sun, <laughs> uh, is, is very convincing, you mm. know, and yet there's nothing like, it's nothing like the sense you get in a photograph mm. of, of a kind of mechanical, mechanically imposed consistency. Mm. Mm. So how do you manage the unities, mm. Mm. <laughs> if you will? Um, well, I, I'm, I'm flattered that you, you've noticed that. It's, it's um, I think people think that, that you know, I, I only paint this painting, you know, for 20 minutes at a certain time of day, but of course, the way I work is that, is that I'm painting all day, every day, dawn till dusk. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm putting in the sort of local color and the, and the, uh, and the sort of basic underpainting and, and, the, and trying to get the texture of the rocks or, the, or whatever it is. And, and the, as I say, the basic underpainting and I'm doing that all the time, all day. Uh, and then as I'm watching, I mean, some of them might take uh, a big painting might take uh, two or three days just to do the drawing. So the drawing might take two or three days and then I start to paint it after that. Well, after you've sat and watched the sun go from east to west every day for two or three days, you begin to realize just when that place looks at its best. It might be three o'clock in the afternoon or it might be four o'clock in, in the afternoon, it might be 10 o'clock in the morning, it could, any, any time. But you see where the shadows are giving describing, helping to describe the landscape and helping to show the shape of everything and where the place looks absolutely at its best. And that's what I'm trying to find. And I watch that happen over the period of that I'm doing the underpainting and so on. And then I simply, the next day when I get to that point, say 10 o'clock in the morning, I, I look and I simply put the shadows in over painting what I've got underneath. And I think the difference between that and a photograph, if you look at a photograph, Mostly the shadows are black on a photograph. Uh, and I never use photographs because the colors are just hopeless. They, uh, uh, they, they, they do not describe what you can see with your naked eye. And so uh, if you look at the, really look at a shadow, you will see that there's all sorts of colors underneath it. And that's what I've been painting up to that point. And then when I see the shadows, where I want them to be, I put them in. And once you've started to do that, then of course the painting has got its logic. And everything else after that has to follow that logic. You can't have the sun at 10 o'clock in the morning on one side and then think, oh, it'd be nice to have the, sh <laughs> nice to have the shadow of the other side on this tree. Uh, and so it has to follow that logic. And so, and so that's how it, it maintains, and, and thank you for noticing, maintains that unity. I mean, all of these paintings mean a great deal to me because they're all a, 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 a very important part of my life. I mean, each one, to me, it, it tells you know, an enormous amount about, I can, I can send myself straight back to Greenland by looking at that painting, or straight back to Death Valley by looking at that one. Um, and so they all have, they all have deep, a, a deep attachment to me, or I have a deep attachment to them. And, and one of the worst moments of my life is when the truck comes and parks outside number one Well Street, and the, and the men take away the paintings for an exhibition, and I'm left bereft of all these things that I've been working on for, for three or four years. Um, uh, and so I'm deeply attached to all of them, really. But the place I've been back to most often, I think, is the Grand Canyon because it is just endlessly varied. Um, I've travelled into the canyon. I've, I've spent, I think I've probably hiked, I don't know, three or four hundred miles in the canyon altogether at different times, if I did all together. And it is that you, you are never bored there because the light is changing all the time, shapes come and go, something detaches itself from the North Rim or appears to and becomes a butte on its own and then re-emerges with the, with, the, uh, with, the, with the North Rim. Things, things alter all the time depending on the light and it is endlessly fascinating. Um, and I can see now why it's always been such a huge icon for artists and photographers because it is just 
such an extraordinarily fabulous place. Many, many intimate places. In, when you get down into the canyon, there are so many intimate, tiny, but beautiful places. Uh, and then these huge, enormous vistas. Uh, I mean, that's an extraordinary place. Um, and so I think my Grand Canyon stuff is the, is this, uh, that is the place I'm most attached to. But I haven't, I wouldn't say I had a favorite painting, really. Some were harder to do, and if I've succeeded because they were so hard to do, and if I've succeeded in doing them, then I'm very fond of those. I mean, the east face, actually it's not here, but, uh, but it's somewhere around. The east face of Everest was one particular place which was incredibly hard to get to, very, very difficult to work in, and the painting turned out fantastic. So that's one of my favorites, but, but that's only because it was tough to do and turned out well. Uh, so I'm sorry, I can't pick out one that you should take home with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.